Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I will continue solving different problems about triangles, quadrangles, parallel lines, etc. Uh, this is a series of questions number six out of eight. And we have ten different problems to solve today. Okay, so let me just start. Construct a triangle by two sides and an altitude onto one of them. So, we have a triangle. We have two sides and altitude towards one of these sides. Well, let's do it this way. Uh, since we know this side and an altitude, first let's put this side uh, somewhere on the plane. And now let's build a locus of all the points uh, which can serve as the third vertex of the triangle with this base and given altitude. Now, as we know from one of the previous problems, which is obvious even without the problems, all these vertices are located on a line parallel to our base and on a distance equal to an altitude. Now, out of these lines, we have to pick up one which has a particular distance from A. So we just take this distance in the compass, use A as a center, and just do this, basically. So that's the uh, that's the point C which we are looking for. Now, uh, obviously, you can have more than one solution if this uh, circle uh, intersects the parallel line in another point. So this is another C prime, a triangle AB C prime, which has exactly the same base AB exactly the same side, which is AB, and, uh, and an altitude uh, which is drawn towards the base, the same altitude. This one is equal to this one. So this particular problem might have two solutions, might have one solution if the circle is just touching the parallel line, or no solutions if the segment which is given to us as, as the side AD is too short. Okay, number one. Number two, construct a triangle by a side, an angle it forms with another side, and an altitude onto it, and an altitude. Okay, it's more or less the same as, the, uh, as before, we just have an angle instead of a side. By the way, I would like to mention something. Whenever you're talking about triangles, well, you know that there are three different uh, uh, most important uh, properties of triangle, uh, they are congruent if either two sides and an angle in between, or two angles and a side in between, or three sides are congruent. So in all cases, we have three different elements, either three sides or a uh, side and an angle, two angles, whatever. Now, in these cases, all of these cases, which we are, uh, which I'm going through, there are also three elements. So it's not coincidental. Triangle is something which can be defined by three different elements. By the way, it cannot be defined by three angles because they are dependent on each other. If you remember, the third angle is always 180 degrees minus two other angles. So getting three angles is actually the same as getting two angles. But let's say two angles and some kind of side, or, or altitude, or, or anything, actually. 
three elements independent of each other really gives you um, more or less um, unique identification. More or less because sometimes, as you saw from the previous problem, you can have two solutions or no solutions depending on their mutual dimensions and uh, relationship. But in general, triangle requires three elements. And uh, you can actually go back to algebra. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you um, know this property, but in general, if you have n different unknowns, you do need n different equations to find these unknowns. Uh, with linear equations, it's kind of obvious. If you have uh, linear equations, then number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns to have a solution. Um, okay, so let's go back. So we have a side, we have an angle, and we have an altitude. Well, we start the same way as before. We put the base somewhere, and then draw a locus of all the vertices which have the same uh, altitude as the altitude given to us. So basically, A, B, C, D, A, C. This is given. Now we have to find a point B. Now, how can we find the point B on this line? Well, in the previous problem, we knew the side, A, B. In this case, we know the angle, which means from this point A, we have to just build an angle equal to, to the given one, and that would be the point B. And obviously, altitude will be correct because uh, the distance between these parallel lines is equal to the altitude which is given to us. Simple. Construct a triangle by angle and two altitudes onto sides that it form that form that angle. Okay, so again three elements angle and two altitudes to this and to this. Right? Okay, so how can we build this particular triangle? Let's think. Well, let's think about it this way. Consider a triangle A and C. We know, first of all, that this is a right triangle. We know the acute angle. And we know the catechus which means we can build it. I don't want to uh, go into the details about how to build a right triangle by a catechus and an opposite angle. We already considered that before. So we can always construct this triangle. So I'll just construct it basically using the same. So that's how we do it. A and C. Well, if you are very much interested, okay, I, I'll, I'll just talk about this a little bit. You have the right angle first, you know this catechus, so you basically know the point C, and now you have to either subtract from 90 degree this angle to get this one, and you draw the line, or you draw somewhere else, somewhere else, the line with this angle, and draw it parallel through C. So anyway, we can do it. So we have this, and uh, we have this. Now, now what should we do? Well, now we have two different ways. Uh, first of all, since we know this altitude, we can draw a line parallel to AC on the distance equal to this altitude. Continue this. and you will get the point B. Because the distance between these parallel lines 
is equal to our, our altitude. Alternatively, by the way, you can consider a triangle ABM, ABM, so instead of drawing parallel line here and um, continuing AN towards intersection, you can just build ABM by exactly the same two things. You have the catheters and an angle, and we know how to do that. So either or, we built the whole triangle from starting from the right triangle, which is made by an altitude. Okay, number four, construct a triangle by side, sum of two other sides, and an altitude onto one of those sides. Again. Construct a triangle by a side which is AC, let's say, sum of two other sides, so sum of AB plus BC, and altitude onto one of them. You know what? It appears to be right triangle, I don't want right triangles. Let's try to do it more general. Okay, and now the altitude would go something like this. Okay? So this is point B, and this is D. All right, so we know the side, we know sum of these two sides, and we know the altitude. Uh-huh, I see. So, the way how to do it is the following. Let me make this sum of these two sides this way. I will continue line AB towards C prime uh, on the on the lengths equal to BC. So BC prime is congruent to BC. What will it give me? Since I have uh, one side and sum of other two sides, so basically AC prime is sum of AB plus BC because BC prime is equal to BC. All right? Now, let's think about what we have, A, C prime, C. It's a triangle where we know one side, let's call this side the base, an altitude, and another side, which is exactly what we have already solved before. So, using whatever the technology we had, we can always build A, C prime, C by a side, by an altitude towards that side and another side. So let's consider we do it. So we built AC prime C. Now, how to find the point B? Well, very easy. Since BC and BC prime are congruent, B, C prime, C is isosceles triangle, and median and bisector uh, and, uh, and altitude from the vertex B towards C, C prime always fall into the middle. So we have the middle, we built the perpendicular, and that would be the point B. And A, B, C, this is not prime. So ABC is uh, the triangle which we need. Now, the altitude is exactly the way how we had it. AC 
prime is sum of these two sides. Yep, everything seems to work fine. Notice that in many cases I'm just referring to something which has already been covered in one of the previous problems. That's how one problem helps to solve another problem. That's basically the whole building of mathematics is built from the foundation up. Construct a triangle by its perimeter, an angle, and altitude onto one of two sides forming that angle. Okay, so we have triangle, an angle, and altitude. Let me repeat. Construct a triangle by its perimeter, which is sum of three sides, an angle, this is an angle, and altitude onto one of two sides forming an angle. Okay, fine. Now, I think that since we have a perimeter, we have to really stretch this triangle the way similar to the previous problem. So we will continue this line to C prime, so these are equal to each other, and continue this line to, you know what, prime, double prime, it's too many primes, let's just continue with E and F. So I basically opened up our triangle. From BC I turn it to BE, and from AC turn it to AF. That's what usually is done when you have perimeter or, or sum of two sides, etc. Now, what's interesting actually is that, you see, the triangle ECF, ECF is not really easy to build using exactly the same technique as before because we do have um, the side, we do have an altitude towards that side, but we don't have an angle, as in the previous problem. However, what's interesting here is that, you see, FAC is an isosceles triangle, and this is exterior angle, which is equal to sum of two interior angles, not supplemental to it. But since it's isosceles, these guys are equal to each other, which means the angle FAC is half of the angle which is given to us, which means we basically have it. We just take the angle which is given to us and divide it in half. So we take the angle, divide it in half, and we get this angle. Now using this angle and this side and this altitude, now we can build this triangle. So this is F, E, C. Because we now know this angle, which is equal to half of the one which is given to us. Now how to get points A and B? Well, the same way as before. Since F, C can be divided in half, and this perpendicular would hit the A, since this is isosceles triangle, so I do this. And that's how I get a perpendicular through the, mid, uh, uh, through the middle uh, of this segment. And same thing here. Perpendicular bisector of this will give me B. So I have A, B, C. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. Angle is twice this, uh, twice the, the size of this angle, and the altitude is also the one which we need. Okay? Let's continue.
That was actually not a bad problem, quite frankly. Draw a line in the triangle parallel to its base such that segment between the points of intersection of this line with other two sides is equal to sum of segments this line and a parallel to its base cut from these sides. Oh, I know this. So if you have a triangle, you have to draw a line such that mn is equal to am plus nc. Well, it seems to be kind of a difficult problem. However, again, I, I remember we already actually addressed this issue before. There was another problem. If you have two bisectors, angle bisectors, and on their crossing, you draw a line parallel to the base, then this line exactly will be the one which possesses this quality. Why? Because this angle is equal to this angle as alternate interior. Now this is equal to this because it's a bisector, which means these two angles uh, are congruent to each other, which means these two segments are congruent to each other. This is isosceles triangle. MPA. Same thing here. These two angles are congruent because two parallel and transversal alternate interior angles. These two angles, this and this, are congruent because CP is an angle bisector, which makes these two angles, MPC and NCP, congruent to each other, which means these two segments congruent to each other, which means that this entire segment, MN, is equal to sum of this and, and this, because this piece is equal to this and this piece equal to this. So, what's interesting here is, um, it's easy when you remember that the point of uh, intersection of bisectors has this property. If you don't remember that, well, you might actually spend some time basically thinking about how to, how to solve this problem. Well, that's why it's important not only to solve the problems, but also to remember what exactly the problems were, problems were and, uh, and, and how, you, how you solve it. Okay. Construct a polygon congruent to a given one. Okay. Let's say you have some kind of a polygon. How to construct a polygon equal to this one, congruent to this one? Well, basically, there is a very simple answer. You know how to construct a triangle congruent to a given one, let's say by three sides. That's the easiest, right? So what we do is we just break it into triangles and copy every triangle separately. Build a triangle congruent to this one, okay, by three sides. Done. Now build a triangle congruent to this one by three sides. You have this as a diagonal, this one. So you have another two sides. And continue, continue, continue until you finish up. Basically the whole process of uh, constructing a, a polygon is reduced to a many smaller and simpler problems to construct a uh, congruent triangle. Because otherwise you will have to think about angles and how to copy the angle. You still have to break it into triangles no matter what. Construct a quadrangle by three angles and two sides that form the fourth angle. All right. So you have two sides and three angles. So again, three angles and two sides that form the fourth angle. 
All right. Uh, so what can we do? You know what? Here's the easiest, uh, I think, method. You know that the sum of angles of a quadrangle is 360 degrees. So knowing these three angles, we just calculate, we just build, construct, whatever, draw an angle which is 360 degrees minus these three. So consider this as well given to us. Now, and if it's given, the way how we uh, construct this particular uh, quadrangle is simple. First you do this, you, you construct this angle, which is also given, as we just, uh, as we just stated. Then knowing these sides, you basically know this point and this point, right? Now, knowing this angle, you build from this point an angle which is congruent to this one, and from this point an angle congruent to this one. And on the crossing you have your quadrangle. So what's the important thing here? Well, understand that the fourth angle actually is given to you basically with a very um, simple construction problem to subtract from 360 degrees three given angles, which we did many times before. Construct a quadrangle by three sides and two diagonals. Again, quadrangle. We have both diagonals and three sides. Well, let's see, this, this, and this. Well, but think about it. If we have both diagonals and three sides, we have A, B, C, D. We have a triangle A, B, D where we know all three sides. So we can start basically from having this triangle by three sides. So we have already these points, right? A, B, D. Now, how to position my point C using A, C, D? We have this A, D thing, right? Now, using AC and CD, we do two arcs centered in A and D correspondingly, and that's what the point C is. And that's our triangle, uh, quadrangle, sorry. Okay, the last program, problem. Construct a parallelogram by two non-parallel sides and one of diagonals. Well, that's basically the same thing. If you have a parallelogram, you have two non-parallel sides given to you and a diagonal. Well, if it's this diagonal which is given to you, then you just construct a triangle and do a couple of parallel lines. If it's this side, which is a diagonal which is given to you, then you notice that this side and this side are congruent. So you can still build this triangle. So in any case, you build triangle using three elements which are given to you, two sides and a diagonal. And then, basically, you can reconstruct the parallelogram from the triangle. So if you have a triangle, let's say this one, how to build a parallelogram. These are sides, and this is diagonal. Well, you just do the parallel here and parallel here. And here you have your parallelogram. That's it. That was the last problem. Um, I hope I wasn't too fast. Uh, in any case, um, please continue solving the problems. Uh, pay attention to Unisor.com. For parents, uh, it's the perfect tool for homeschooling. Um, it has a lot of um, exams. You can enroll your student, or uh, basically uh, you can check the score on the exam. You can pass or fail the student. So basically it's a tool to do the homeschooling for 
responsible parents who, who want their, ch their children to, to know math a little bit deeper than is traditionally uh, started at school. That's it. Thank you very much.